in this video we're going to be talking about my personal favorite subject which is uh curves yeah you know what i'm saying let's go so very quickly before we start if you're really serious about learning 3d and you want to learn it as quickly as possible then i highly recommend you join our academy 2.0 program academy 2.0 contains a whole curriculum of courses and assets and add-ons that will help you to get from the beginner stage to intermediate to advanced very quickly and efficiently we also offer a private community on discord and weekly q a calls when you can ask us questions directly and get instant feedback this is a very effective and fast way of learning 3d so check it out the link is in the video description now like in polygon modeling curves are essential to modeling in CAD so when you know curves in plasticity you know kung fu so let's learn kung fu shall we now you're gonna see here on the right hand side you have the menu of main tools right and 70 or 80 percent of them are curves no surprise you got the line curve spline curve then you got the circle multi-point curve you got the spiral you know square bridge then you got the trim tool and also the split curve uh, tool. So let's start with the basics. It's going to be the uh, line curve. So shift A and you can just draw any shape really you want with a line until you confirm this with a right mouse button. All right. Then of course you can snap from one point to another. So shift A is going to snap. If you have snap enabled here, you can snap from one point to another. You can also tap shift to kind of mimic angles. So let's say I wanna mimic this angle. I hover over here, tap shift, and you're gonna get these kind of like guidelines. Click here, tap shift, click here, click here. You can very precisely um, draw shapes uh, using uh, these techniques, okay? Now the thing you can do with this curve, you can simply select one of these points. If you don't see points, you simply press one. Then you can press B for bevel, and you can either chamfer this uh, or bevel this, all right? with your mouse. Next, we're going to have the spline curve and control point curve. So now the spline curves, I'm not using that often. This one is quite interesting though, because it will allow you to draw a curve through the points wherever you click. So if I click here, for example, curve will, will stick to this point and go through it, kind of follow all these, uh, all these points that you actually clicked on a canvas. Now there's not a curve here, so you can press and hold this menu and go to this control point curve. This one is fantastic for tracing shapes because it will not go through the points where you click, but it will kind of average in between them. You see that? It's kind of very similar to pen tool in Photoshop in a way. So you, you can use it for tracing shape. It's fantastic. So if I approve this here and press one and I wanted to adjust these, I can very, uh, very easily do that by simply moving these control points, you know, um, around on, uh, on the canvas okay another cool thing that you should know is that when you use spline tool the spline curve you can press tab when you're drawing to switch between spline and the control curve point which is pretty cool now, now circle has a lot of options right the basic one is just you know you draw in a circle okay now what you need to really understand with circles and any curves really but especially circles when you draw a circle let's say from here right you will see there's like a line um like a gray line following my cursor try to align this right to either of these axes because it will actually determine points on this curve later on when you want to add something to it or modify it it's actually really important when you where you click with your mouse when you actually finish drawing uh, the circle curve because now when i want to for example run a line here in the middle you see that when i'm going to go um, through that circle with my cursor it actually highlights uh, different points. Like for instance, here we have uh, the exact 45 degrees angle. Another way you can do that is simply draw a curve, press tab twice, and actually determine the uh, angle to whatever you want, like let's say 45 degrees. So that allows you to, to draw very precise um, sketches with curves that then can later be extruded into solids, okay? So that's not a tip. Now let's look at the other circles because they're quite interesting. So you have this two point circle, right? This is really cool because you can determine two points between which you want to draw the circle and it's going to be tangent between these two points. It's really cool. This one three point circle is also interesting. You know, you need three points to draw a circle. That's fantastic when you, for example, have two mirrored curves and the one in the middle. 
and you want to draw a circle precisely in the middle, that's fantastic. I was using that when I was creating uh, one of the concepts recently. Another tool here that's really cool is the uh, tangent circle, so this one, right? This one is fantastic because you determine two surfaces between which you want the circle to be tangent, okay? And you can move it up and down. But check this out. This also works with curves. So if I'm going to have splines here, right, like this, okay? And I'm going to have another spline here going a little bit more narrow and then kind of, you know, going wider. Then I can actually draw this between these two. And when I move it, the diameter is going to shift. So this is really awesome. And of course, you can use control and snap to different points. So let's say I had, a, you know, um, another curve coming in here, right? I can draw this tangent circle and then hold control and you can snap it in here, which is really fantastic. Another cool tool is the point arc circle. That's a cool one. So it's this option here. You click and you then determine the, the, the diameter of the circle. You click and then you can actually create a, sort of like a draw a line in a circular way Let's say you want to snap it here, right? So let's snap it to this one. So press shift and then just snap it and right click. And then you got this kind of a shape and you could use the trim tool, which is here, press T to trim this, right? And you got this kind of a shape of a question mark. And you can combine these curves together with J or unjoin them with Alt J if you want to explode them, right? You can see that the curves are being exploded here in the menu, right? Or combined into one. This one, bevel this, right? Okay. Then you can also extrude this. So select the curve, press E and extrude it. And you get yourself a question mark, all right? Now, the best tool out of all of these is this bridge tool. That thing is fucking insane. So let me show you. Let's say that you have a, a curve somewhere here like this. And then we're going to create another curve here somewhere in space, okay? some kind of a curve, curved, um, you know, situation like this, which is even move it up. So it's, it's really, you know, kind of in space there. And let's say we wanted to connect both points. So this one and this one was a tangency, a continuity of, of the curvature. This would be impossible to do manually, but you can use this tool, the bridge one, which is fantastic. Click somewhere here and then click somewhere here like this. Then you're going to have this menu here, which tells you what you can do. First of all, let's turn off the auto trim, which automatically trims the excess edges that you not need, right? And you can first move the ends of this curve to whatever you want on both sides. So let's say I wanted to uh, have this curve go a bit deeper and here start at the very end of this uh, curve, right? Then you can change the uh, the connection. So this is the shortest uh, route between them. Then you got the G1, which is a tangency. Then you have G2 and of course G3, which is super curvy, right? Now the next thing you can change is tension. You can actually uh, maintain the G3 connection, but you can also adjust the tension just ever so slightly to make it less bulging. And lastly, you got this trim option, which will trim off any excess edges that you don't need, right? So this is, you know, this is a, perfect connection between these two in space and it actually maintains the continuity of curvature so this is i i would argue this is one of the best tools in this program okay so that's how powerful it is so now let's talk about trimming and and creating shapes with curves because honestly uh, that's how you're going to be working most of the time right so let's say we're going to draw something okay so let's say we're going to start with a circle so let's go here and uh and just grab a circle right so we're going to stop to the middle of the canvas and draw a circle. Again, we want to determine where this gray edge falls. Let's just go here on X, Y, Z. Then we're going to duplicate this. So Shift D, G, G, and move it somewhere here and scale it with S, S. And now what we want to do, we want to draw a tangent line between, you know, these circles, right? So we want to have, let's say, uh, this curve here. So we're going to start somewhere here and... When you join the curve, you need to understand that when you see this line, this thin line, if you follow this line with a second click, because you need two points in order to maintain tangency, right? If you click here, this connection will not be tangent, okay? It's going to be actually a G0, which means it's going to be a sharp angle. But if you're going to follow this line, which basically is a continuity of this curvature to which this point is connected, and then 
uh, start you know curving out you will have a perfect tangent connection here so let's do something like this and then if you want to have a tangent connection to this circle you need to find when you're hovering over a point where it says tangent okay see that boom tangent curve click and this will ensure that you're gonna have a tangent connection between these two okay and the second one let's just uh, do the same thing so click and again follow the line and then we're gonna go a bit closer here like this and then find tangent point right click and we're good to go now let's select these two circles then we're going to press off offset and we're going to offset them in right and now we can actually do multiple things so for example what i could do is i could grab the trim tool right with t and start trimming things i don't need now the only time you can trim is where these curves are on the same plane if they're going to be misaligned um, by that i mean one of them is going to be slightly off you know off this uh, surface you can't trim them okay you need to be on the same plane but you can skip the trimming process you can simply select the, the faces that you want to select so let's say i want to select these three with shift and i don't really need these two openings and then simply i can start extruding and i got my shape okay then of course if you don't need the construction curves you can select them with shift and delete them and you got yourself a shape another way that you can use curves you can use them for cutting okay it's really important this is another tool that you're going to be using all the time let's say i wanted to cut a circular shape around this one and detach the the middle part from the main mesh i could grab this curve here shift d to duplicate it right go to the side view press o for offset offset it to let's say this size and then if i wanted to slice this mesh with this curve i'm going to press c select the mesh right click and now you're going to have this large boolean so watch i can remove these two curves and now i'm going to have mesh in the middle here and mesh the second mesh i cut it out of okay? and uh, it's kind of like a slice boolean in blender okay uh, same thing another thing you can do you can imprint edges okay so let's say i didn't want to uh, you know cut it but i wanted to imprint an edge to let's say create a face so i can drop it down so what shift d i'm going to approve it and i'm going to press o again and i'm going to expand this right out a bit if you can't see your curve just press alt z to see through it's a little bit in so we need to move it up so let's move it up here okay and i'm going to press shift i to imprint it um, in my case i'm just going to go to my radial menu and use my shortcut here but shift i for imprint then you select the body you want to imprint and if you don't want to imprint through the mesh because you see we're going to have this overlapping here. You simply click on hide occlusion and it's going to imprint only on one side. Okay, approve this and now I can select this face and do something like this. All right, so you can start seeing how curves are really a very powerful way of modeling uh, in this software. It's just uh, incredible what you can do with them. Another thing you can do is you can array along the curve. So let's say that I wanted to, I don't know, use this. Uh, let me just uh, grab this one here okay s and y y to sorry s y y to scale and y axis select them both and boolean them together so it's one mesh okay nuke all the curves and i'm going to rotate it on this axis here and drop it somewhere here in the middle now let's say that i wanted to, to create kind of like an array along the the curve right so let's just grab a circle here and draw a circle uh, in this in this area and I'm going to um, grab this curve here and uh, run a tangent connection like this. Okay. And then I'm going to, let's say, run another tangent connection here. Um, you know, something like this. Okay. And I can actually trim this area because I don't need it. So press T for trim. And now I have to combine these curves together. Okay. So these are all separate curves, right? So press 2 and sort of select from the left hand side press j to join them to one curve and there you go and now let's move uh, this mesh here to the beginning of this so gg and just align it with the beginning of the curve and now what we can do we can actually use curve array so watch actually let's scale this a little bit right so we're gonna select this model here press f go to to array curve array and now we need to select the path so select the path and then all you need to do is simply change the number of your array, etc. Right? 
So this is how you do it. Another thing that you can do with curves is lofting. Okay, this is you know one of the most important things if when you when you work with this card because you're gonna be doing surfacing. Uh, so you're gonna be creating uh, guidelines for lofting and then creating surfacing uh, uh, surfaces out of this. So let's say that I'm gonna be uh, let's say I'm just gonna draw a surface here like this with this you know with this uh, point curve, and I'm going to duplicate this somewhere here and scale it. Now let's say I'm going to you know rotate it like that and drop it down, and I'm gonna mirror this to the other side, and you know I wanted to create a surface in between them, but I also wanted to create guidelines for the surface so I can deform it on a way, right, on its way. So um, let's just uh, go to the side view and we're gonna draw the. Let's just grab another curve and we're gonna draw something like this here, through this through these surfaces. So we can, you know, kind of create a rough guide, okay, like this. Now, when you're lofting surfaces, you need to make sure that all these curves are connected, okay? If they're disconnected, it will not work unless you're using x snaps with the experimental version. So GG, and we're going to have to hold control and snap it. We need to make sure that it actually connects to the surface, right? And here in the back, what we could do is connect them from the top. So we could just do something like this, right? We could actually use a spline curve, so... Uh, let's just grab the other curve, spline curve, because this will actually run through the points, so we don't have to fix it, and you're good to go. And now, let's say that we wanted to, um, you see that's not connected, so we need to connect this, GG and snap it. Now let's say we wanted to, you know, add some more control points of, to these curves, we can do that by simply going to 2 and rebuilding the curve and then you can determine how many points you want let's say we want i don't know five points okay you can also press um, shift s to subdivide the curve so shift s is going to subdivide the curve into smaller points now be careful with this because the more points you have on the curve the more difficult it's going to be to create um, smooth transitions and smooth surfaces. The fewer points you have, the curvier the surface is going to be basically, okay? So, you know, be careful with that. So let's maybe go with that many. And let's say that I wanted to, you know, kind of push them up a bit here. Then again, I'm going to have to, you know, reconnect this curve here like that. And I think we should be good to go. So now let's loft them together. So we're going to select this one, this one, and this one and press L. And now we can use these as guides, okay? So hold shift and use these as guides to tell um, plasticity how you want to profile them. So that's how you create, you know, organic surfaces in plasticity. Um, you're going to have to get used to curves because you're going to be using curves all the time. So play with these options a bit, you know, discover them, just have fun. Um, but it's just incredible what you can do with this. If you're coming from Polygon software like Blender, you're going to have to slightly switch the way you model in your head from just working with blockouts to working with um, kind of drafts, you know, and kind of drawings and and then, you know, lofting surfaces together. So it's a lot of fun. All right, well, that's it for this video. Hope you learned something useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.